Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kubuman, and today's video is about a ticket that came through our system and it's going to be about email. Email is very important and yes, a lot of businesses use Microsoft products for email, but a lot of businesses are actually switching over to web-based services like Gmail, which is pretty normal. And the issue I'm going to talk about is something that comes up a lot for me. I've seen it a lot of times and this is something you're going to see a lot in Help Desk with any company that has switched over to using Gmail for an example. But then again, if they're switched over to using some other web-based system, chances are that the issue could be resolved the same way as I'm going to show you in this video. Guys, please take one second to like this video. I really appreciate it. It really helps push the video forward. And just so you know, if you subscribe, Pretty soon I will have a crash course about tickets. So this crash course is going to be a lot of examples with tickets and we're going to I'm going to show you how to work those tickets and it's going to be a really good video for you to watch. All right, let's get into this one. So here we are in our ticketing system. If you're not familiar on how to use ticketing systems or just want to know how ticketing systems work, I have a specific video on that. I'll try to remember to put, put a, a pop-up up here so you can check it out and at the end of the video as well. But in this case, we're using a Jira service desk ticketing system as an example. Keep in mind, every company is going to have a very similar system in, in when, which they use in order to track tickets and work tickets. So here's our first ticket that we're seeing here. We're going to click on it. It's going to be related to exactly what I mentioned earlier. We can see it's from Mike Moser and Mike said, my Gmail is not working. I can see my old emails, but no emails come through, nor can I send emails to people. Uh, we're going to definitely try to take a look at that, but first thing we got to do is assign the ticket to ourselves. So if we come over here, assign it to ourselves, that way we want to make sure we are actually spend time on it and, um, not, and, and work it while we have it assigned to ourselves. We don't want to work a ticket that somebody else picks up. So that's very important. It says, my Gmail is not working. I can see, I can see my old emails, but no emails come through, nor can I send emails to people. And there is a screenshot. We're going to click on the screenshot. And our screenshot literally says not connected, connecting in one second. Or we can click try now. So the error is not connecting. And uh, it's going to retry automatically. I've seen this quite a lot. So this is something you can definitely going to see a lot in a, in a business type of environment that uses Gmail. And it says here, message could not be sent. Check your network and try again. Again, I want to kind of stress this real quick is that a lot of businesses will be using a web-based email system nowadays yes you can uh, a lot of businesses are going to be using office product like outlook and i have videos on that as well but a lot of businesses are switching over to using web-based system and in this case it's gmail it's perfectly normal for a large company to be using gmail nowadays so this is something you will expect now back to our screenshot that we hear that we see here says not connected connecting in one seconds so logically thinking it's a connection issue right because literally says connected this is a something that as, as somebody who does uh, pc troubleshooting computer troubleshooting you look at the error specifically and then you are kind of deducting from that what to what might be the issue and it says here message could not be sent remember he said message could not be sent check your network and try again Logically speaking, again, connection issue, network. So the first thing you would say to him or ask the customer, hey, do you have network connection? Do you have internet connection if they're working from home? Do you have network connection? And that's logical way of going about this. However, I specifically know that this issue is not necessarily re related to their local network connection. It's a connection issue related to connecting to Gmail server or the email server in this case. So this is something that's resolved quite differently. And if you ask the user or if you log into their computer or let's say you remote desktop into their computer and you check their network settings and everything looks fine, then you're going to be confused. But I specifically know how to fix this one. So there are a couple of ways of going about this. If you're remoted in, if you're, if you're using a remote desktop and you're inside of their computer, you can simply go to Google and go to Gmail, and then Gmail is going to load up, 
and sure enough when it, it doesn't usually happen that error usually doesn't pop up like around here right away but it does pop up whenever they try to send something so everything is going to look fine they're going to see their old emails in here and then they, they can browse everything they can click on something and you know that's all great and fine but they still get that error so there are a couple of ways of doing this there is a temporary solution and the temporary solution to this error is actually to do this if you go back or reload the page so if I go to back to if I go to google.com which I am already there but I'm just gonna do it again google.com and you can tell them click on Gmail and then see in the bottom here it says load basic HTML click on that see I missed it because I wasn't quick enough so let me go back here real quick I'm going to click Gmail and then I'm going to have to catch it load basic HTML see I missed it because it loads so fast chances are the business environment it's not gonna load that fast let me see if I can catch it this time come on load basic G there it is so once you load a basic HTML without all this fancy GUI action that you're seeing uh, it's going to work fine and but users gonna be like well what's going on it looks totally different and then you can simply click switch to standard view it's gonna go back to the old one and it's actually going to start working fine but it's a temporary solution because the issue this issue specifically is related to some kind of a catch data action that's going on in the background so it's not if we go back to here and look at this screenshot it's not connecting and it says check your network and it keeps retrying and retrying especially whenever he tries to send something it's a configuration issue related to being able to connect to gmail server however that configuration resides on our local computer so what happens is when we clicked on load basic HTML earlier, it flushed that and it switched over to the different server that handles basic HTML version of it. So it temporarily fixes it like that when you switch back to normal one, but it's going to revert to using that old configuration information. So there are a couple of ways of doing about it. If you have a single sign on, type of uh, setup in a business environment which means that users use their domain login typically for every system that they log in you can simply reset that or you can reset their um, or you can reset their uh, Google or Chrome if they're using Chrome you can reset their Chrome profile so if you see it here if you right click on the little icon here and then it's, you can see that there is a Google profile right there and you can turn on sync this and that but if you click on sign out and create a new one basically refresh it this would also resolve the issue I don't like to do it like that because I like to kind of get into it uh, like kind of like get my feet in there and exactly to exactly where this actual profile is so this is what I'm going to show you now if you open up your file explorer to minimize this here and if you go to the root of C and you go to the users profile users folder and you ask them well what is your login ID for your domain and they tell you my login ID is this and that and then that that will tell you what their local login ID profile name is so let's say their login account is BUCO he says my login ID is BUCO this is where we're going to concentrate on if you're for example accessing this over the network or if you're on their PC literally looking at their local profile but you could do this over the network um, I've shown this in my previous video if you want to check it out on how to do this without RDP at all and then we're going to go into app data if, if app data is not showing you see how it kind of looks like uh, as if it was a cut like if you right click and you cut the folder that's how it looks like it kind of looks faded folder that's because it's usually a hidden folder if you don't see it uh, you have to just select on show hidden folders and then you can do that if you click on view or click hidden items right here so if I do that it goes away and if I do that it comes back so if you can't see it it's definitely there or you can simply just type it in app data which is where we're going to it's the same thing as if I was to click on it so again we're looking at this time at this point we're looking for 
configuration data for that Google Chrome email that we're working with here. So we're going to look to see where this email data and configuration data is located at specifically for Chrome. That's going to be in local. So if you click on the local profile and then look for Google, and it's going to be right there. It says Google. We're going to click on that. And sure enough, here is our Chrome folder. We can click on our Chrome folder, and then it says user data. You see where I'm getting that? If we click on this, it's going to definitely have all the user data, all the catch, and all this other stuff that is related to everything that's going on with Chrome. All right. So for this to work, you're going to have to ask the user to close Chrome entirely. So I would have to close this window. And what, what, what I would normally do is I would click here and then I would make it, I would rename it and I would just type it in and call it old. <clears throat> so keep in mind, whenever they open up again, it's going to create a new folder called Chrome as well. It's going to create a new one once you open up Chrome again. So, th and this is how it's going to be. I'm going to right click Chrome and I'm going to run it as a different user. So I'm going to type in B-U-C-O. Let's see, I can't see both. And This is supposed to be a, a login and password ID. It's not showing up properly. There's some kind of weird corruption. But what I'm typing in is actually a login ID and a password, but you can't see it because there's some weird glitch there. And I'm going to click OK. B-U-C-O, and there it is. Now you can see it. Let me see if I can remember the password for that. There it is. So now I've opened up browser, Chrome browser, as the user, and you can see that automatically created a new folder called Chrome. Okay. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is that you can see that once you log in, the user, this is exactly what they're going to see, as if they opened up Chrome for the first time. So they're going to have to log in to Chrome again using their single sign-on login. So if you can click here and you can click, you know, sign in, that's fine. But what I usually do, I have them go to google.com and then I tell them to click on Gmail. And th what this does usually is triggers the sign-in for the single sign-on system. So you can tell them, you can click or tell them, click a sign-on and then here you just type in your email address and then from there it's just going to work. Okay, now they're going to be back into their email and they're going to, and then notice that if they had any bookmarks here, they're not, you know, they're not there. So keep in mind, you may have to do this as well before you let them go. So the way you would restore bookmarks, if they have any, if you go back to the Chrome old folder, user data, default, and it's going to be called bookmarks. So this is a backup of it, but here's the bookmarks. So you would take that, copy, go back to Google folder, go back to new Chrome folder, user data, default, and paste it in there. Now their bookmarks or cookie or bookmarks or favorites are back in. Okay. And that would fix this issue that is present to us here. That's how you resolve this specific issue. It's a weird one because it's misleading, but that's how you fix it. And chances are that's how you fix any other web-based email issues. And then of course, uh, we're going to add internal note. Now this is all assuming that we are talking to the customer on on the phone or, or in some other way, like over instant messenger or something like that. So uh, there is no reply to customer here because we're already talking to them um, in this uh, role playing scenario. But since we've resolved the issue, I'm just going to type in resolve issue by Chrome reset. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to close the ticket. I'm going to mark it as complete. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Again, I have quite a few more of these ticketing system videos. 
and very soon I'm going to combine all of them into one, a really long one that you can sit through and, and just kind of follow along or just you know watch and, and learn from my actual work experience. All right, guys, thank you so much again, and take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.